Monday nights on our radio network on the Ohio IMG Sports Network. We visit with Saul Phillips for the Saul Phillips Show across the largest radio network in the Mid-American Conference. So what we do from Latitude 39 at Baker Center is we slice up the show for you, the best parts of the show in about five minutes of viewing time. Ohio lost by 10 to St. Bonaventure on Saturday, getting ready for Alcorn State on Saturday at the Convo. So here's our visit with the coach here on Bobcat TV. A group of Jans fans out here in front of us were very gracious to host the, the team the other night. We, the potluck, yeah. Yeah, the we, party. We, we sang some Christmas carols, and if, uh, if they can tolerate my singing performance, then I know they're thick skinned. That's, that's a. What did you sing? Uh, we sang Frosty, the snowman, I believe. Nice. Very good. Very good. You lost by 10 the other day, 80 to 70 to St. Bonaventure. We talked to you in post game. We'll get into it a little bit more, but, but again, your your kind of broad stroke thoughts a couple days removed. Well, it, it's never as bad or as good as you think on tape. There's ta games where you think you're world beaters, uh, and you look at the tape and you're like, well, no, some good things happened to us, and there goes the opposite way as well. Uh, you know, the biggest thing is that we we learn from our mistakes, f following jump shooters. That's not something that we've done in the past. It's not something we continue to do. Uh, you know, I, again, there's there's plenty of positive to take away from any performance, but there's also plenty to learn from too. And I, I think we had a pretty even, you'll have to ask Tone, I think we had a pretty even keel approach to it today. I didn't come in and rub their nose in it. We, we show them what they did wrong. We try to correct it. And that's how you move forward as a team. But I'll tell you what, it's hard as a 18, 19, 20, 21 year old to let it just roll off your back, nor should you just let it roll off your back. It's got to be a balance of, of moving forward, accepting accountability for what we didn't do right. And in getting better. I, I tell you this, I was very impressed with St. Bonaventure's team on tape. They, listen, we've lost three games now to three good teams, three teams that are upper tier MAC level teams. I'm not saying they'd win the MAC. We got very good team, teams in our MAC, but certainly teams that would give a lot of people a hard time. But, you know, you got to beat some good teams at some point, too. We're very early on in this. Uh, I wish I could hit the fast forward button and go through the growing pains, but uh, that's you know what it wouldn't be any fun at the end when, when it gets when it gets right. Asked about scoring slumps and what do you do in practice to try to alleviate that, try to get that a little better. I think our scoring problems have come directly when our shot selection has wavered at times. Uh, you know, in the first half, we were scoring at a pretty high clip. That ball was moving. In the second half, the ball got a little stickier, and you have one or two pass possessions. And you just can't get a defense to spread out so you can throw it into guys like Big Tone if you're not reversing the ball a couple times. Uh, I don't think it's a, it's a problem of scheme. I think it's a problem of understanding exactly what it is what we want. I don't think all of it comes from a bad place. You see a guy, you know, if you're in a little bit of a scoring slump, jack up a shot. Sometimes you're thinking, I'm going to get our team out of this slump. Right. I I'm going to put them on my shoulders. And a better understanding of what your role is and how it is we generate offense. I've always thought that a great way to stop a scoring slide is to get to the free throw line a couple times. Uh, you saw when we had a lull there in the middle of the, of the second half, uh, we weren't getting the free throw line as much. And again, mm -hmm. some of it is some of it's schematic and figuring out what lineups I put on the floor that puts the brakes on us. Yeah, and I, I get a better idea of that the further we get along. Kyrie Harley is uh, a kid that we're inserting into the lineup now that hadn't been there before. Certainly we're looking to add tone into the mix more as he becomes more and more productive. We're still feeling through some of this, and you hate to be doing it, but at the same time, you're you're playing a bunch of guys that haven't played together before. Right. Kyrie Harley had not played a game until this year. We certainly need him. We need him to be good. So we keep learning. Just keep learning. And you know, it's it's funny. You can do that against the team that's uh, uh, maybe a little uh, less talented, and you do it in a 15 point win. We still had that lull. Mm -hmm. It just becomes real obvious when it's a tie game, and all of a sudden you look up and it's eight points because we haven't scored in a while. You are getting into. Uh Preparation for them. Your thoughts on the boys from the SWAC? A lot, uh, a lot of pressure out of their zone in particular. Uh, they will try to turn you over. Uh, they've got a their their leading scorer. Help me with the name. I'm struggling. Uh, well, I haven't he, delved into okay, it yet. They, they've got their leading scorer. Yeah. Believe me, I know number one. How's that sound? And I'll know his name by the end of the night. Yeah. Uh, 
scores in a variety of different ways. Uh, and he is a kid that uh, they utilize him a larger percentage of plays than all but nine other players in America. So that's that's a kid that's that's a lot. That's leaning it's on a guy hands. pretty heavy. Yeah. <laughs> now you go back to what have we struggled with? Well it's been one guy kind of getting us. Who's gonna be our alpha dog to get him? And that's kind of your subplot defensively of the game. Uh, but it's another pass and catch game. Uh, they will they will press. Uh, they will get after you. They'll run and jump. They'll do all kinds of things to you to try to disrupt you. And uh, we will have plenty of time to prepare for it. But again, preparing for that type of pressure sometimes is is trickier than just saying this is where they're coming from. Final thought, Packers, Falcons tonight, Snow and Lambeau. You are a diehard Packer fan. Your thoughts? Packers by 60? No, actually, I... I uh, I told you earlier, I, th I think it'll be a little more, close. more of a tussle than, than people think. But again, I got bigger fish to fry here. I'll, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll worry about us a little bit and uh, maybe have that out in the background. All right, Coach. Thanks for the visit as always. Take care.